Tell me your name. Billy F. Burns is the way I signed my name all the time. All right. And uh, Bill. And you, I mean, we're in Abilene. That's where Abilene, you live. Texas, right is now. that where you're from? I've, no, I'm originally from Lapan, Texas. Yeah. That's not far from Granbury, Texas. I it's see. Like this side of the... And, of course, you, I heard you playing the guitar, and I've heard some things about you. Um, tell me when you started, what age, and how you got started, and things like that. I started about 1945. I was probably in the seventh grade in school, I imagine. And uh, I had friends that brought their guitars to school. That's all anybody played was guitar, mostly, you know. And uh, so I thought, well, I want to learn to do that. About 1942, though, I heard a couple of guys play one night, the O'Bannon Brothers from South of Manor Wells down in that area. And uh, one of them played, listened to the Mockingbird and fiddle tins like that, and I was just, I didn't, couldn't play anything. I was about, oh, nine years old, I guess, at that time. And, and uh, but I was so enthused to learn from those guys, and three years later I could play guitar a little bit, mandolin a little bit, fiddle a little bit, and uh, made my own mandolin that I played, and played it on the radio in Granbury, I think, on the Amateur Hour, 1948, the fall of 48, I believe it was. But anyhow, I learned in 1945 to play those three instruments along about the same time. And uh, I was sick the summer of 45, I believe it was, in bed most of the summer. I think it was 45. And uh, I played some old Carter family records, Maybell Carter playing the guitar, you know, and and I learned to do that. Similar to what she did, I was using a straight pick, and it sounded like what she did, you know, as much as I could make it sound like. Uh -huh. I still play those some of those ten yeah. girls here that sang those old original Carter family songs, but uh, I've never made a living playing music or anything like that, you know. I just played with groups around and we traveled with George Bush in 1964 on a grassroots campaign tour and that's the two towns I mentioned, Madisonville and Centerville over yeah. in East Texas, I remember. And we may have stopped in Crockett, I don't remember. I don't remember the name of every town where we stopped. Yeah. And that last And Bush was running for He what? was running for United States Senator against I Ralph Yarbrough. Uh huh. It's kind of interesting, one of the guys in the band with us, he and I kind of, he filled in for me when I couldn't make it or something and for a few days, but he was a fiddle player and a songwriter, wrote some songs that were recorded by different people. And uh, he wrote a song about Billy Sol Estes. Uh -huh. And uh, it was just kind of a comedy thing. And, and in his speech, George Bush Sr. would say that Billy Sol Estes had given Ralph Yarber some money. He'd say, I don't know how much it was, 20000 or what it was. I don't know how much it was, but he never would He didn't know what it was. Uh -huh. But he'd make some remark about that. One day on the bus, well, he said something about Billy Sol. I said, his brother's our dentist in Abilene. Yeah. <laughs> he said, sure enough, is he a pretty good guy? Yeah. <laughs> but the day Ralph Yarber died, I was drinking coffee with Billy Sol Estes oh. here in Abilene. Oh. He died the night before. It was Saturday morning. My and goodness. I was drinking coffee just accidentally with Billy Sol Estes. Now, how did you know How later. did you know Estes? <laughs> well, he's from here. And so you just happened and, to be. Uh -huh. uh, but a friend of mine and I were drinking coffee in a little place out here. They call it Colonial Inn then. It's uh -huh. a motel. And Mr. Estes was back there and and we said, Mr. Estes, come up and drink coffee with us. Okay. Yeah. And he got up and yeah. up there. And, yeah. And, uh, but yeah, I knew him. Now, what was the man's name that wrote that song? Oh, J.L. Jones. Yeah. He wrote a song called 15 Acres of Peanut Land. Uh-huh. And it went, not trying to get rich, just living if I can. There you go. Where everybody <laughs> smiles and the hogs run wild on 15 Acres of Peanut Land. There you go. <laughs> he lived in Anson, Texas. <laughs> But he was a fiddler on the uh, Slim Willet television show uh -huh. in Abilene. I never did get to know Slim that well. I just was around him a few times and visited with him one time, but I uh -huh. never did really get to know him. But he had a live TV show once a week, and J.L. Jones was a fiddler. He's really good. Uh -huh. I think he lived the uh, last part of his life out in Mount Pleasant, Mount I Vernon, see. somewhere yeah. there east of Dallas. But, uh, oh, it's some of the people that I've played on stage with, you know, like. Bill Monroe one time, and uh, some of the grand old, well, let's see, Jimmy C. Newman, grand uh -huh. old, we first band for him one time, and 
Rose Maddox, played with her up in Colorado in 1987. And uh, she was well known back in the 50s, mm -hmm. 40s and 50s, the Maddox brothers and Rose. And then she went out on her own in 1953. But uh, I remember. Yeah. Oh, you know, go ahead. I'm sorry. That's all right. I, I remember, you know, visiting with people like Jimmy Davis. Uh -huh. Jimmy Davis yeah. And had a real good visit with him in 1986, I believe it was, 86. Met Roy Acuff and visited with him in 1987 at the Grand Ole Opry backstage. But uh, anyhow, we had a friend, Melvin Sloan, who was a member of the Grand Ole Opry that we knew, and he got our ticket numbers and got, got us out of the audience and took us backstage uh -huh. to Mr. Acuff's dressing room and had a real good visit with him. We got to exchange some stories. And, but I've enjoyed, you know, a lot of people through the years that were well known, some that weren't very well known. Now, we, we talked earlier about Ab Abernathy. Ab uh, Francis Abernathy, uh -huh. yeah, with uh, Stephen F. Austin College over in, is it a college or university? Oh, well, I believe it's a university, university now. University right? now, I, I, but they used to play at the... Uh, Folk Life Festival in San Antonio, and we started playing over there with a the group in 1975, I believe it was. And they were still playing there the last time I went. I think 92 was my last year to go over and play at the Folk Life Festival in San Antonio. But I knew Francis Abernathy and Charles Gardner uh -huh. and uh, Stan Alexander and Tom uh -huh. Nall, I believe, because uh -huh. they all the group. Ronnie, let's see. Trying to think of Ronnie's like Ronnie Wolf that played fiddle with him when Charles quit playing with the group. These Texas string and cymbal and cymbal, whatever, uh -huh. how are you uh -huh. pronounce it? Uh -huh. anyhow, yeah, I knew all those guys. And if you haven't seen any of them, they're still around. Well, just oh, well I see them from time to time. time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just tell him Bill Burns. I'm going He'll to. know who you're talking about. <laughs> I sure will. I'll make it a point to call him. Yeah. Um, and we also talked about Bob Murphy a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I never did meet Bob, but. I was telling you, Grandpa Jones and I were visiting in 1986, 86, yeah. And uh, Grandpa said, do you know this little one-armed feller from over, what's the name of that town? I knew who he was talking about. Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't know it. I said, I don't know who you're talking about. I, I don't know him. But uh, He used to go with Francis and Abernathy and them to the Folklife Festival, uh -huh. did his little routine uh -huh. over there, storytelling or whatever. Right. But he quit going, I think, by the time I started going over there. Francis told me that he used to go with, with them over there. And then he told that story about long walk to Fort Worth. That's what the- Yeah, what to go ahead and tell that story. Well, uh, somebody asked Bob Murphy what the word Nacogdoches meant. And he said it was an old Indian word, meant a heck of a long walk to Fort Worth. That's right. <laughs> Except he used a little stronger word. I understand. What I, what I did. <laughs> That's yeah, very, no. very good. But anyhow, well. then, then I told Grandpa about the friend that had a girlfriend in Waxahachie, Texas, and he was going to write her a letter, but he couldn't spell Waxahachie, so he, she, she moved to, but he finally learned how to spell Waxahachie, but by then she had moved to Nacogdoches. That's right. <laughs> he thought that was funny. <laughs> that start all over. over. Yeah, I'd heard somebody tell that at Glen Rose, where really? Grandpa and I were at the uh -huh. time, uh -huh. and I told him that. A good friend of mine told that on stage over there one time by his daughter. My goodness. But anyhow, I could go on and on. And I know you could. Now, you, so what all instruments do you play? Well, usually play the fiddle with most of the groups because there's no fiddlers around to mount anything around here much anymore. And, and I play mandolin or guitar. I could play bass. I played bass four hours one night at Stanford Country Club, I think it was, with a country band that I was playing with back in the 80s. And, but mostly mandolin, guitar, and fiddle. And I could play auto harp. I, uh -huh. I had one, and I uh -huh. learned a little bit about playing it, but I, I wouldn't consider myself. A, and, of course, the Mountain Dulcimer, I fooled with them a little sure. bit. But sure. uh, uh, Hammer Dulcimer, I don't sure. know anything about. But okay. It's All just right. been a hobby through the years. But Well, I think we're going to go out and play something right now. Yeah, I think well, so. Well, thank you so much. I enjoyed it. All right. Thank you so much.